next. A quick thank you to the T5 peeps, Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Dark Machine, Estrella the Dreamer, Mesic, Pudic Yol, and Casper Arnholtz. Thank you very much. Story number one. Insurance Code Section 4917-116. Human Dual Sentience in Case of Corpus Catacim Agenesis. Written by, trust me, I just get weird. Two and a half drinks in, at five minutes past ten, in some interspecies drinking spot on the west side of Manhattan that rarely checks IDs at the door, you're just starting to feel a buzz. None of that matters, though. Not the time, not the city bar, and certainly not the jello shot you had half an hour before. The one that'll definitely hit you sometime soon, because you and Loio are celebrating. God damn it, and the both of you are gonna have fun! Loio downs half a glass of his species preferred intoxicant and slams his tumbler down on the bar. He closed some case this week, something big with the shipping company and the boonies of the asteroid belt. Three things are inevitable. You guess. Death, taxes, and insurance lawyers. So she tells me that's tomorrow me's problem and dumps the entire thing on the boss's desk. You throw back your head and laugh. Liquor robbing you of both body of control and good taste. God damn it, Sarah, you say. God fucking damn it. Laio shakes his head. Yeah, welcome to my world, jerk. I have to work with her. Hey, just, um, that's a problem for tomorrow, me. Jesus, mother of God. You chuckle and pick up your glass. I wish I could do that sometimes. Just, hey, that was the other me. Hey, so you can't put me on probation for throwing a plant through Jerry's window last Tuesday. Lo Ayo laughs a bit more than necessary. Yeah, blame the other you. He taps his glass on the table. You know, legally speaking, humans are considered two people. You choke on the drink. Wait, what? You say. Like, uh, the entire species is two people. No, like every human is two people in one body. Wait, you didn't know about this? Hell no, what the fuck? Don't mess with me, dude. Holy shit, dude. I'm gonna tell you some crap. Okay, one sec. Loayo downs the rest of his drink and slams a hand to the table. An excited gleam in all four of his eyes. I did my senior thesis on this. Holy crap. So in insurance law, humans are put down as two sentient beings in one body, and it's so goddamn stupid. Explain, you say. Please, too drunk for this crap. You might as well hear this tonight. Loayo is a surprisingly good monologuer when drunk. So, there is this case in 2413 or something, Patel vs. Kayalua Life Insurance Co. That was the one that set the precedent for this. But oh boy, get ready for this clusterfuck. So, yeah, back in the 1890s, oh, wait, uh, 1980s? He drops his head at the table and groans, ugh, dates are hard. Anyway, there was the surgery that split the brain in two, right? Like right down the middle, and the poor bastard they did it to would be fine. But sometime, crap would go weird. Like one hand was trying to put a shirt on while the other was taking off like fat no dude. So they did some studies and crap, and they found out that the two sides of his brain couldn't talk to each other anymore. So they were acting all weird on their own. Looy shrugs. I don't know, dude. Neurosci was your thing, but it was really weird. Does that make sense? You almost remember that case. The corpus callosotomy. You think it was. You nod. Also, so the bureaucrats were going back through the stuff when Earth joined the Galactic Alliance, and someone just decided, crap, we're classifying those dudes as two people, why not? So split brain patients got put down as two people. And like, no one does that surgery anymore, but here's the thing. The precedent was still done for that to be a thing in a court of law. So this lady, Patel, her wife got the left half of her brain blasted out in a car crash, like right down the middle. Dude, ooh. But she lived. Rain went halsies and she kept kicking. Or at least she kept kicking on one side. Left side could still move and stuff. So her wife went and argues that she should get her life insurance payout on the lady's policy. Because it was the left side that signed the contract and said her vows and crap. So her wife was technically dead. Don't tell me she won. She fucking won. He groaned. Dude, your job is fucking stupid. Loy smiles with a crab-eating grin. I know, it's awesome. So she wins, and a lot of convoluted legal crap happens that there is no way that you would understand. You feel a twinge of offense. Hey, 
Nine three sheets to the wind right now, but I know you, man. Do you want a repeat of finals week? You concede that point. Finals week was a bona fide disaster. Looi flashes a smug smile. Thank you. So anyway, now it's stuck in the law that humans are two conscious beings in one head. But you can't tell, because they're kept in sync so long that it's functioning like one brain. That's a stupid law. Yeah, I know. But here's the kicker, okay? They tried to overturn it in 2485 or something, and it was like watertight that it would get nixed. But then it turned out that some scientists in 2091 found out that one in every thousand or so humans is born with a split brain. But no one notices because the left side is only the one that can talk or ever says anything important. So the insurance companies just said feck it and classified all humans as two people to avoid dealing with it on a case-by-case -case basis. He lifts his glass and then realizes it's empty. So yeah, if you want better premiums, you could get a paper marriage to your other brain out in the boonies and I could get you a couple's plan. Think about it. This is stupid, you think. This is stupid, and you're so done with this crap. Can't you just test for that? I mean, yeah. But do you want to? Oh yeah, I want to. I'd want to know if there's another person up here with me. What if you're the right brain, though? Right brain can't talk, dude. I'm talking. Yeah. Well, how do you know that you're the one talking? Maybe Lefty is in there talking, and you're stuck listening in all the time. He waves his fingers in what was meant to be a creepy way. You will never know. You flex your hands out of the table, first left and then right. You think you controlled the right one, the one you write with. It moved where you wanted it to. But what if you just thought that it was in your control? What if you were just imagining what you needed to feel? What if... Yeah, you hear yourself say, I'll never know. End of story. Story number two. Transcribe of a meeting on human aggression, written by This Is My Phone Though. Thank you all for your time today, and please let me know if there are any problems with the translators. I'd like to present my findings on the inhabitants of Seoul and their relationship with aggression. Contemporary wisdom, which is mostly academic due to the rarity of it manifesting, suggests that aggression is a form of resource management and acquisition in situations where resources are scarce. With Sol's entrance into the galactic stage, we've seen a great breakthrough in a branch of maths that is deemed game theory, which gives us much more insight to how this could have come to be. Humans, as some of you may be aware, did not receive sentience from the Creator, our planets were seeded and cultivated until we were ready to harvest ourselves and join our brothers and sister species amongst the stars. We always had plenty, and barring a planetary upset, both are as perfect as the day our planets were blessed by the Creator, each of us unique and designed with a purpose. The humans, however, experienced something they've called uh, evolution, along with every single species in their solar system. They are purely the result of natural selection process, which we can now recognize as a source of corruption and imperfect worlds. Their world is not imperfect, as it was never perfect in the first place. Their world is a roiding pot of chaos and suffering, and that has bred in as each species a certain amount of coping mechanisms to survive. Aggression is one of them, along with play and pack for familial bondings. The evolution is not the creator, but the tinkerer. Where the creator works from the top down to design each system that builds the whole, the tinkerer tweaks, adds, subtracts, and repurposes each generation as the pressures outside dictate. Many of the human aggressive habitats are not connected to the resource acquisition that gave birth to aggression, and is merely a repurposed response to various stimulus. We've studied and been given resources that show humans express aggressions in leisurely activity as well as towards their own infants. This aggression towards the helpless has been given the oxymoronic name of cute aggression, and we've been assured that it is a positive emotion. They currently theorize that the Tinkerer gave them this response to encourage play with the young, which in turn develops mental and physical fitness. With all this information, I would like to suggest that we remove the aggression sensors on the human translation goddess entirely. 
I believe that while the automated termination function on translators have undoubtedly prevented countless tragedies in our past and contributed to galactic harmony, the translators are simply unable to account for the alien emotions of a never-perfect world. And our efforts will end in the genocide of the sole sapient creation of the Tinkerer. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.